Um, we're down to our last presenter for tonight. Um, also known by the nickname Paka, Karna Mulla is a Nepali Nari in love with life and the process of defying gender-based stigma. Still figuring out how, the how-to of it, Karna believes she is doing. She's going to live up to her name and do her part in making the world a better place. Who knows? This may be the start of it. She loves traveling, vlogging, reading, singing, playing basketball, and just learning to be a better version of herself every day. Karna. So I recently went on a trip to Upper Mustang with my dad. Our Mustang trip too, so adventure was expected. But unexpectedly, what I also happened to realize through this journey was how our society perceives Nepali women, Nepali Nari. And unfortunately, what I figured was the lens through which we are perceived is not much based on what we can do, but more on what we cannot do. For the nth time, I was just reminded how sexism is so deeply rooted in our society that people don't even realize that there's something wrong with it. And this figuring out actually started before we left for Lomantang. I was planning this long road trip with my cousins, but in the end, I was very subtly excluded from the group just for the reason that I would be the only female in there. And the strongest argument they could make was and just to clarify, these men that they were referring to who might misbehave with me were not some random strangers, but their own friends. So it was so easy for them to tell me to stay home instead of just telling their friends to maybe behave a little. So that got cancelled and came up this father-daughter's mission, Upper Mustang. And as we went along, with our journey to Lomantang, we definitely had the adventure of a lifetime. But the funny thing is, if you ask me what was the most favorite part of this trip for me, I'd say unintentionally surprising a hell lot of Nepali males along the way. I didn't think of this when I left home, but the further I reached, the higher men's eyebrows were raised. There was this man in particular who blurted out right in front of my face, in our lay bike to danger so long the reason, thinking that a female riding a motorbike in that terrain could definitely not be a Nepali. And not realizing he was talking about me, I went on to ask, Kolle Dai, to which the mostly shocked and a bit embarrassed him replied, Eh, Moileto Filipino bond, Hadego Boy Nilai. And there was this another very kind Dai who offered to take the motorcycle down one of the most dangerous slopes for me. And even after I told him I can do it, he kept on insisting and started elaborating on how really difficult the road was ahead. And I think that it was difficult actually for him to wrap his head around the fact that I, a five... Okay, slides. Excuse me? Okay, so I think it was difficult for him to wrap his head around the fact that I, a five-foot Nepali female, was, able, was capable of doing it on her own. So long story short, we ascended the cliffs, we went through many streams, rocky, super sandy trails. Lord Dai Por Dai, we reached Lomantang. And upon our, upon our arrival, the hotel staff and few locals started telling us how I was most probably the first Nepali female to have reached there riding solo on a motorcycle. And all I could think was, look at the irony of life. At this point, I just wanted to call my cousins up and say, started from the bottom, now we're here, but I didn't. Because the more I thought about it, the more I realized that this is not about me. This is about all the Nepali women, all the Nepali Nari who've been denied so many things in life just because we're females. This was about all the Nepali females who've heard no for an answer from parents for college trips. This was about those females who've been restricted to get out of the house and hang out with friends after six. This was about all of us who've been tortured all our lives with this phrase, Katie Manse Boero. 
So this was an answer to the Nepali parents who locked their daughters home, thinking they're securing their prestige. This was an answer to the Nepali society that does not have the guts to tell the men to behave, but in one go, slams the door on the woman, telling her to stay home, stay safe. And I know a lot of Nepali parents and men who might say, well, we're just trying to protect you. To which, with all due respect, I say, fuck that. Because you think you're trying to save us, but all you're doing is making us more vulnerable. Because you're not the superhero she needs. She's already whatever she needs to be. And all she has to do is realize that. But until we keep restraining her, thinking what we're doing is the best for her, she will always and always need someone else to save her over and over again. She will always have to surrender. She will never get to truly live. And she will always just survive in pain. So stop limiting the skies for your sisters thinking this is the best for her. So wake up. Stop trying to be their savior. Step aside and for a change, let her rise. Stop treating us females like damsels, like we're nothing but weak. Instead, support us in everything we want to do. Be there for us cheering in every step we take. Instead, nurture us to be strong, independent warriors who can stand up for ourselves and who don't need to be protected by others. Etch this onto your memory board that a Nepali Nari is way, way stronger than you think. She's not just a shy, slender sweetheart, safely draped in a sari. Stop putting her in shackles of how she's supposed to be. Because she might as well be like me, who loves wearing boko t-shirt, chattego pan, and rides all the way to Nepal-China border on two wheels. And my final message here to everyone on behalf of all the Nepali Nari, just under the wire. Mind you world, we're not feeble, we're fire. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, with that.